hi guys <laughs> welcome back to another video oh my god i'm still looking for an intro by the way i know the last time i said i'm i definitely have to change the one i've been using <laughs> but gosh <laughs> i can't think of a new one but um anyway guys welcome back and uh when is today today is um a tuesday yeah today is tuesday the um, the 27th <laughs> of june oh my god i'm just out here i'm at the park i decided let me just come by and enjoy the weather because oh my god for some reason my my ankles are so swollen like i've tried to um elevate them and um well at first they you know when i first elevated them the the, the swelling kind of started going down but then again oh my god they started swelling up again as in i look like a pregnant woman <laughs> It's just, it's just that I don't want to show you. I don't want to move the camera from where it is. But oh my God, my ankles are feeling so swollen. So I was like, you know what? Let me just come out to the park and um, go for a little walk. Since, man, I was at the gym today and I kind of, you know, it was kind of hard for me to to um, do my normal workouts. Because, man, the swelling is real. So, But anyways, I don't think it's anything serious because... Um, I've been drinking a lot of water too. I've been hydrating a lot. So I don't know. I think it's just um, pressure. Because actually last week, last week I overworked myself. Like I, I think I went to the gym almost every day last week. And last week I mostly focused on my legs. Like I was just doing weights and stuff. So I don't know if that could be the reason why. Because normally I, I, I try to split my workouts and stuff. But anyways, so yeah. That's actually, um, I decided I'm going to do the video standing because when I sit down is when I, I start feeling the, the pressure a lot. So it's easier for me when I stand up. But, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, guys, yeah. So today I'm back because, man, hey, this past weekend, but I hope you guys had a great weekend. For me, I, I did. I had an awesome weekend. Um, I just, I don't know, for some reason, I, I kept uh, finding myself going back in um in time you know like when i first came to this country and all like i just found myself visiting like all the places that i went to you know like but there i went back to um to the building the the freshman building for low high and oh my god i was i was passing like i was passing by over there because i was going to um i was going to downtown um i actually i went for a walk in downtown law and oh my god <laughs> I don't know guys, maybe I'm considering moving out of state. You know, I've been thinking about it for some time now, but then I always used to ask myself, if I'm to move out of state, if I'm to move out of the state of Ma Massachusetts, where am I going to go? And um, for me, I can say I used to I used to look into moving to New York. You know, I liked the idea of living in the in the big apple, <laughs> you know, with the lights and all. Cause, I mean, you know, there's there's much more stuff to do in, in New York, the city itself. But then um, when I looked at the at the cost of living, man, it's not it's not cheap to live in New York. So um, for a minute, that's why I was like, ah, let me just stay in Massachusetts because at least I'm more familiar with this place. But I don't know. Lately, the way I've been going around and stuff, it's like I'm realizing I've outgrown this place. <laughs> I don't know whether there's this story in the Bible about the city of um, of Lodiba, you know, a place where there was um there was no productivity you know like everything there was just dead i mean nothing nothing good pretty much used to come out of that town and i'm telling you like <laughs> i don't want to say that's the story with law <laughs> but i don't know i'm feeling like a safe man for a minute actually i've been feeling as though I'm li i've been living in lodiba you know I need to sp uh, spread my wings and go somewhere else. But now the question is where, you know, because, okay, I thought of New York at first. And then because of the cost of living, I decided, okay, um, I can, you know, I can move to to California, actually. At some point, I thought of moving to California. But then, man, with all the crazy wildfires that are going down over there, hey, the quality of air pollution, mm -mm. I was like, no. <laughs> I don't think also the cost of living in California is not cheap, you know, because at least, you know, here, here you can, um, you can always find something to do, even though, you know, things are also uh, kind of changing right now. 
but um it's easier here like for me i i'm, I'm used to surviving in in this state you know in this um what is it called, what is it called? the north side <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I thought of going to California, but then hey, with all the wildfires and then also the cost of living. Because for me, before I, I consider relocating, I always look at um, I always look at my my motive. You know, why am I moving, and where I'm moving, what am I going to to be able to benefit out of where I'm going? You know, I d I don't believe in this whole thing of moving out of pressure. You know, where especially you know here. <laughs> Kenyans around here, you know, we usually migrate to where the money is. Kenyans and money. Wakikuyu na pesa. So if you hear, if you move to the state of Washington, that's where you're going to make money. That's where people are going to go. So over the years, people have been moving like pretty much all over. You know, it started with Texas. Some people went to Atlanta. Some people went to um went to um Washington State. And I think recently now Kenyans are moving to Portland, Oregon. That's like the new place. And also at some point people were moving to Arizona because there was a time I also considered moving to Arizona. But then also when I checked the, um, the, the livelihood out there, it's not, you know, it wasn't really something that I, I was interested in per se. So anyway, long story short, that's how I have remained in this state of Massachusetts for so long. <laughs> Trying to figure out, man, if I'm to move, if I'm to move to a different state, what state should I move to? You know, if you guys have any suggestions, by the way, I would love to hear. Let me know, cause um, I wouldn't want to move um, to a place where it's gonna be much more hard for me to be able to make my dreams and also my objectives come to fruition and stuff. But um, so yeah. Anyway, guys, that was my weekend. I just spent most of my weekend um, going around places and. Uh, yeah, just reconnecting, you know, trying to reconnect with um, bits and pieces of myself <laughs> that I can say I lost along the way. <laughs> oh my God! Actually, when I went to the when I took the walk around downtown, there I passed by um, the old Simba Lounge, the ones I've, I've told the you. The place. I don't know whether it's been on. It's been put up on sale, but um, nobody is really purchasing the place, so it's not anything right now. It's just it has been shut down, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> Passing by over there, my God, he gave me so many memories. Actually, on was it on Sunday night? On Sunday night, I was in. Uh, there's a there's a town. I believe it's called the town of Methuen. I don't know if Methuen is a town or a city. I'm not it. I'm not too sure, but I think it's a town. The town of Methuen. Um, I used to work there. That was my first full time job, like forty hour job, <laughs> that I that I um started. When I, when I got into the workforce and everything after finishing high school. And I was in the area, so there's this house that I used to work in. And um, at the time the house was new, it had just been built. And um, we were like among the first, first staff to work there. But oh my God, we used to be Kenyans alone. <laughs> I think we used to be like four or five Kenyans out of like eight staff. We were, we were like five Kenyans working there. Man, that place kind of brought memories too. I was like, oh, wow. But the funny thing is, do you know I still remember the address? Like, I remember the address of the place. And I even remembered my way. <laughs> it was when I got there when I was like, oh, my God. You mean all these years later? from? Because I used to work there in 2008. Was it no two th from two thousand and six to th to two thousand and eight? But now this is where the story is. Man, I was fired from that job. <laughs> that was the first time I got fired. Oh my goodness! Hey, I'm telling you, cause um, what happened was after some time, we started you know just like normal issues at work where. Um, you know, management kind of there's this one person who is you know always trying to set you know set set you up with management but at the same time they are acting like as if they are your friend so that it was a situation like that there was this one spanish chick who used to work there <laughs> man that chick used to set us up because she used to act like she was you know she was cool with us like you know because you know now you know africans the way we usually operate with each other because normally to work um, in a job like that because it was mr um, mental retardation Nowadays it has been changed. Um, they are referred to as people with develop, uh, developmental disabilities. But um, back then it was MR. So you know those, the, those kind of jobs, you can't have one job. You have to work at least two jobs. I mean two jobs for you to be able to meet your, 
your your expenses and stuff so people used to have to come from another job and you know so there was sometimes people will come late you know because you maybe somebody is working 3 to 11 somewhere else so by the time they get there it's like 11 30 because by the time you know the problem with those jobs is you can't you can't leave until the next staff comes in so you have to wait to be you have to wait to be to be relieved you know you just can't say oh it's 11 o'clock it's time to go so because of that now we used to work with each other where i'm like okay as long as i get there by 11 i can be able to cover for the other person until they get to work because you know they have to travel and all but now this spanish chick hmm, she used to act like she used to understand you know she used to understand us now the africans <laughs> <laughs> and how we operate kumbe hey she usually you know she would come and and hang out with us and then she would even come and tell us like you know what the other now you know the other like what management is saying and the other staff now who are close to management you know you know there was ungu staff so anyway um so she would come and you know she used to play both sides of the coin kumbe this chi this chi um this chick used to go and set us up so before we knew we knew it we started i mean people started getting fired one by one by one <laughs> imagine to leave that to a job you know now like they started looking for for mistakes you know to a point where now they even started coming to to check on us in the middle of the night you know at two o'clock you know at like two o'clock in the morning at four o'clock in the morning you know the manager will come to check to see if you're sleeping ah man so now work started becoming hard because we were supposed to be awake staff there was no i don't think there was no in that house there was no asleep staff we used to work two staff overnight and both of us had to be awake so now with all that you know coming in the in the middle of the night to check on us did we what ah, now work started becoming stressful so before you know it now management started looking for a reason to get rid of of people so they fired they fired these two kenyan ladies by the way and then um after some time they fired another kenyan guy and that kenyan guy by the way he used to be um i can't remember what position he used to have but he used to have a position in the church <laughs> in the pca church oh my god so yeah so out of that so now the reason why i got fired was um i went to kenya that's i went to kenya in 2008 that was the first time i went back now since you know we moved here in 2002 and i remember the day that i came back because i came back like today and then tomorrow night i was supposed to go back to work but when i came back i was feeling so you know how traveling is and then um by the i was feeling i was feeling so jet lagged and then also my feet were swollen you know like the way my ankles are swollen right now they have reminded me of that time <laughs> Because, man, I was so, like, my feet were so swollen, you know, and then I, myself, I was tired. And then by that time now, I was used to working with relief, uh, with relief staff. And you know how some, you know, the way some of the relief staff, they behave, you know, they act like as if they don't know the job. So it's like somebody has worked there three, four times before, but each time they come to work, they expect you to explain to them what they need to do. And then still they expect you to go ahead and do the work, you know, yourself because you're there, you're the full-time staff. So man, hey, when I imagined that, you know, I'm going to go back to work and I'm going to be working with relief staff. And then the way I was feeling, I was feeling jet lagged, my ankles were swollen. I was like, man, there's no way I can make it. I can make it to work because especially now, at that time the way they were coming to um to check on us in the middle of the night i was like man there's no way i can be able to do this <laughs> so i called the manager right and um i told her i was like hey you know i told her how i was feeling you know and i told her i was back and stuff because you know when you when you say you're going to come back at on a particular day hr usually follows up you know to make sure that you have kept your end of of um the deal you know you go on vacation from this time to this time and you have to be back by the day that you say you're going to come back so um for that reason i did reach out to the manager and i told her, i explained to her how, how i was feeling and the reason why i couldn't make it to work that day when i was supposed to go in and she told me she was like oh no problem don't worry about it um yeah you you can just stay home today i'll notify hr tomorrow and um and then you know when you when you feel better and you're ready to come you can come in now the following day so i was like okay cool you know to come aliza na vizuri hey shock on me the next morning i was receiving a phone call from hr at nine hey that woman didn't even wait at 9 15 a.m <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like she it's like she had been sitting around in her office waiting for waiting to hear somebody did not report back to work so she can just fire me you know as in that's what she did like she literally called me and she was like um i'm just calling to notify you and let you know that you know you uh you have been terminated we no longer need you i'm like what do you mean i've been terminated like what did i do you know between the time that i spoke to the manager and now at that time she was calling i was like what did i do to, to deserve a termination and she was like oh yeah you didn't report back to work but i told her i was like i i did call the manager and i spoke to her and she told me it was okay so you know otherwise if she had had a problem with that then i would have tried my best to come to work but uh, the lady was like no i don't know the company had to go through i don't know what expenses looking for somebody to cover the shift i was like what what do you mean as in hey <laughs> anyway <laughs> just like that i lost the job i was fired as in i was told to go and pick up my last check and um see myself out of the job <laughs> Well, hey, I couldn't even believe it. But uh, anyways, you know, it ended up being a good thing, by the way, because it was at that point that I realized, by the way, I don't have to work um, one job or like, because at the time, well, at the time I had two jobs because I was working uh, part time for um, another company, though that company now was mental health. And um yeah, that's when I, I, I realized, I was like, you know what, I don't have to, to work one job. I can be able to work a couple of jobs as long as I can. I can be able to make my ends meet and I can also still have time to do whatever I want to do. And so from there, that's when now I became a hustler. <laughs> Man, I used to work four jobs. I ended up getting a full-time job um, at, the, at the, men the place where I used to work part-time. I ended up now getting a full-time position. They hired me for 40 hours. And then from there, I went and looked for another part-time job still, where um, it was an overnight job. So I was working 30 hours there. And then I went and looked for like two other places where I was a relief staff. So I used to pick up hours from time to time. And you know, that's how I, I survived. And I managed to put myself through college and you know, pay my bills and all that. So yeah you know i've said all that to say that <laughs> sometimes situations you know come you know can happen that seem like as if they are going to you know to um pretty much just kill kill your dream and kill everything and you know put you in a very tough place but sometimes some things have to happen you know for um, for you to be able to awaken you know to to your own strength to your own power and be able to to you know to move to move um to move ahead and uh, do something with it you know create create something out of a negative situation is what i'm trying to say <laughs> but um yeah so man going back to um those places man it has just been eh, hey it has been a very very nostalgic <laughs> weekend <laughs> the nostalgia has continued but man hmm, i don't know what is going on with my ankles like seriously my feet are so swollen i've tried elevating them I, actually before when i elevated them it was um i mean the the swelling started going down but then after some time oh my god now if i elevate them the pressure becomes even more so i don't know at this point i'm considering i might go to um i might go to my primary care physician you know if if, if the the swelling continues just to have it checked out to make sure everything is okay because men <laughs> i wouldn't want to um to have you know to have something that i'm that is going to probably harm harm me and i'm not aware of it but um yeah so that was my weekend guys and um right now i'm at the park i don't know if you can see this park is called uh it's called um shed park I mean, I mean, um, I'm still in law, by the way. I came, I came by to visit <laughs> law. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I don't know. Now I'm just going to hang out over here and enjoy the sun a little bit. And then we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the evening goes. But um, yeah, anyway, guys, that's it. <laughs> Today I don't really have much to say. <laughs> I just thought I should come on and share that. Well, hey, as in, I had to get fired for me to um to realize that I was not stuck 
you know, I was not stuck in, in one place. I could actually spread my wings and do much more and make something out of my life, which is what I did. So even right now, as I'm thinking about where to relocate to, because, you know, recently I've come to realize, man, I feel like I've really outgrown this place. There, there's really not much that is happening around here. And um, I feel like, you know, I've exhausted all my dreams that I had, f you know, for living in this city. I have given my best and I have not been successful at, um, I mean, some of them, yes, I have succeeded, but some of them I have not. And um, so now I feel like I've outgrown this place completely. I just want to spread my wings. <laughs> I want to relocate. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just um, thinking of the the places I'm going to, I, I can possibly relocate to so that at least that way when I'm done with school, because right now I'm, I'm taking my final two courses and then after that I will be done. <laughs> and once I'm done, I will definitely be taking a year off. You know, I was thinking that once I finish um, my B, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> there's another, there's a dog that's going crazy over there. But um, yeah, because I was thinking once I finish my BA program, I'm just going to take like a few months off and then um, start my master's. But man, I've realized I need a break. I, I'll need a whole year <laughs> to restructure myself first. But um, yeah, so I'm looking at um, all my options of how I can, you know, I can be able to use the knowledge that I've gained in school to, um, to continue building myself. But um, yeah. Mentally, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> As I wait to figure out what is going on with my ankles. <laughs> Guy, I feel like a pregnant woman for real. And then, um, what's, what's this called? Uh, YouTube. I don't know. YouTube of late has been recommending for me some very interesting, <laughs> interesting videos. I don't know why they keep recommending for me this video by Justina. A lady called Justina Siokau from Kenya. Madam, she's called Madam 2020. <laughs> they keep recommending for me that song, 2020. <laughs> I'm like, seriously, Sasa, Justina, honestly, I mean, I have no, you know, I have, <laughs> I have nothing against her music, but I just find it interesting because they keep recommending for me two songs from Shiroa GP. Um, one of them is Gedi Makiyama and the other one is... Um, Dimo, you know, Gedima Kiyama means the spring of life. And Dimo is a song that talks about how the Lord cannot sit back and watch um, his people being put to shame um, by his enemies and stuff. So, you know, I was, I was trying to think, because it keeps recommending for me those three songs, like, you know, in a playlist kind of form. But when I, when I hit play, the, it doesn't, g first of all, the songs don't play. It takes me direct to, um, to the premium page, you know to become a premium member and then um, it also um, it doesn't give me the options of do not recommend or not interested you know so it's like every time I, s I switch on my phone and I get on the YouTube app, app at the app, boy Jesus, on the YouTube app, <laughs> those are the three songs that keep coming up. So I was thinking, I was trying to make the connection. I'm like, seriously. Moka <laughs> wakupanuliwa where is the connection? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, yeah, so that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy the rest of my evening as I continue to think about my next step. Because um, once I'm done with school, um, in the next two months, I'll be, I'll be now free to, um, to get myself now out of, you know, out of here and Ah, somewhere else, you know, to the next stage or the next level of life. So, um, anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on that. And if you have any suggestions of where you think I should move to, please um, just drop it down in the comment section, and I'll be I'll be glad to get attuned with it. <laughs> sawa sawa. Anyway, guys. Oh, by the way, I was finally able to um, find some of the footage that. I, I took when I was moving, the day I was moving into where I am right now. But even where I am right now, it's, it's temporary. It's still not like a permanent, um, it's not my permanent home. But um, 
you know, like I've said, I am considering moving, and this time I'm actually thinking of moving out of state. So, um, yes, when I do get my permanent residence, I'll be able to show you. <laughs> but for now, um, I'm just I'll show you the video of, of moving of the day I was moving out, where I, where I was staying back then, you know, because um, man, looking back, I was I was looking at the videos the other day, and wow, I was just telling God. It's been a journey, you know, looking back from the time I came into this country, where I started from, and my journey since that time, and up to where I am right now. You know, it kind of reminded me of the story of um, Sarah, Lot's wife in the Bible. You know, um, the Bible talks about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, and how it reached a point where God decided to allow the, the city to get burnt down because it was full of immorality, it was full of unproductivity, and um, a, a lot of idolatry worship was also going on. And so um, when the, you know, before the angels were sent to come and, you know, burn down the, the, the area or touch the place up, um, Lot's family was given the opportunity to run away um, so that they wouldn't get harmed by what was coming. And... Um, you know it was so as as they you know as they took off in the middle of the right uh, of the night running and the angels started you know um to completing their their mission um the spirit uh, is it what sarah lot's wife decided to look back and um when she looked back she became or rather the bible says god turned her into a a, a pillar of salt and um, to me, I got to, to define that, that, that story as, you know, when God takes you out of a situation, sometimes where you move to can be, can be challenging, you know. The next step or the next level can be, can be more challenging than where you have come from. But it is necessary for you to be on that level in order for you to be able to get to the next level, which is higher than where you are once you, you know, once you leave and also where you were before you left. So, um, you know, this point of, you know, I mean, this thing of looking back, you know, sometimes can also, can also mess, mess up your destiny because sometimes you can look back and desire to go back to where you have been set free from. So, it's very, it's very um, important for, for, you know, before you make such a decision on changing your location, because even changing your location can, um, can contribute to you getting closer or getting farther away from your blessing. So, which is why, an another reason why I've never, I've never really been too quick to move out, to make the decision of moving out of, of state, because to me, I always kept telling myself, I don't want to move further away from my blessing while thinking I am moving closer to it. But um, in, at this point in, in time, now that I have looked back, <laughs> you know, um, I have looked back and I have looked back and seen the hand of the Lord. I have looked back and seen how far I have come and I am proud of myself, I'm proud of my journey and I'm happy with my God. So right now I'm just at that place where I am, I am waiting for the right, the right kind of guidance on which, you know, which direction to head into next. But um, anyway, guys, I'm going to end this video here. <laughs> I don't want the sun to go down before um, I get a chance to at least take a, a short walk and then, um, yeah, see what the rest of the evening has um, as I drive back home. Sawa sawa. Thank you guys for watching and... Um, Subscribe if you haven't and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>
Kufapa ndeshia 